So we had all these things sitting overnight. Um, I was going to attach another video to this, but I think I'll just do it because my internet, I'm up at camp, is really weak up here. <clears throat> so anyway, let's talk about independent variables, dependent variables, and control variables. Okay. Your control variables are things that you really want to keep the same throughout an entire experiment, things that you're not going to change. So although I did my best, if you look at all of these different jars, how does the level of milk look in all of them? Okay. And what was I actually testing? So let's go back over this and think. Now your independent variable is what you change. Your dependent variable is always what you measure. So think of it this way, an independent variable can be any, you can do whatever you want with an independent variable. Why? Because it's independent. It can do what it wants. Dependent variables are dependent upon something. So what are they dependent upon? They're dependent upon what you change, which is the independent. That's one way to think of it. Now, if you are graphing, uh, putting it on a chart, you can always think of this, that your independent variable is always gonna go on your x-axis because that's what you're changing and your dependent variable is going to go in your y-axis because that's what you're measuring. And now we're also going to talk about types of measurements. There's qualitative, there's quantitative. Qualitative means you're looking at a quality. Is it white? Is it blue? Is it red? Is it warm? Is it cold? Quantitative is going to have quantities. It weighs five grams. It's 70 degrees Celsius. Things like that are quantitative variables. But in this, we're going to have a qualitative variable, which is what we're going to measure and write down. And then we have to think about our variables. Now I'm gonna ask you about variables, so you're gonna to have to actually think pretty hard about this. Um, now, the independent variables, what I changed. What did I change? So let's review these. In these first three jars, there are my cold jars, cold one, cold two, and cold three. They all had milk in them to this one. I added pasteurized yogurt to number two. To number three, I added yogurt with active cultures, which means it has a bacteria in there that basically makes yogurt. And these warm ones, what I did was I took them inside, I put them in the microwave until they boiled. Um, we were taking a break at that point, it wasn't on camera. Then we let it cool down. When it cooled down to where it was like 105 degrees Fahrenheit, to this one I added nothing. So it's just milk that was boiled. This one, <clears throat> after the boiled milk cooled down, we added a pasteurized yogurt, which had no active cultures, no bacteria in it whatsoever. And to this one, we added a yogurt that actually had active cultures or a bacteria. So now let's think about it. How come in these two, I didn't add anything? This one just had cold milk. This one just had warm milk. Why would I do that? In these two, I have a cold milk, a milk that was boiled and allowed to warm. And this one, I added the pasteurized, no bacteria yogurt into this one. I added the same. Why would I do that? And here in three, I have the cold milk, the milk that was boiled and allowed to just cool down till it was warm. And to this one, I added the uh, two spoonfuls, well, everything I always put two spoonfuls of yogurt, I put in two spoonfuls of the active culture yogurt. So now let's, uh, let's take a look at these and see what kind of results we have. <clears throat> so here I had the, just the regular old cold milk. Smells like milk. Come here, Cody. Come over here, want some milk? Come here, come here, Cody, here. Can you reach? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Can you film him? Mm -hmm. Here's my assistant, Cody. Turn around. What's that, Cody? Yep. That's his milk. You like it? Okay. Here's the second one where we had the pasteurized yogurt in it. <clears throat> Notice it's a liquid. Here, Cody. Test this one. Yep, it's just like milk. It's cold too. Here's cold three, the one with the active yeast cultures in it. Let's test this one out. Still pretty much looks like milk. Here, Cody, you wanna try this one and see? 
Yep, <laughs> just milk. Now here was our milk that we brought to a boil and allowed to cool. We, we didn't add anything to it. Here, Cody, here, let me move this water jug out of the way. Here, Cody. Is that good? It's just milk. Okay, now I have the milk that was warm with the pasteurized milk in it. Here, Cody. Cody, test that one. Yep, it's just milk. So right now, I don't see a difference with any of these. Cold one, cold two, cold three, warm one, warm two are all the same. Now here's our last one. This is the one that we brought it to a boil, and then we put the cultures in. Uh-oh. What's happening? I believe this turned into yogurt. Yep, it's pretty good, too. Here, Cody. Okay. So, isn't that kind of interesting, though, with two teaspoons of yogurt I was able to make all of this into yogurt and actually I'm always looking to save money so I generally speaking make my own yogurt I know this is what was going to happen I could have taken an entire gallon of milk brought it to a boil let it cool down <coughs> put the active yeast cultures in it just covered it up with like cheesecloth put it in a dark spot you wake up the next morning you have you have yogurt now why were we doing this we were actually investigating proteins and I told you, proteins like very, very specific temperatures is where they operate. Now, this one had the active cultures, and it did not change into yogurt, yet this one did. What was the only difference? The temperature. The cold did not work. The enzymes at that temperature, they can't work. It probably would work if we let it sit for a long time, but the milk would probably go sour by the time it was finished. But if you have it at the proper temperature, and this is actually, we started, it was just above a normal body temperature. Um, and then the enzymes were able to work in that. So now let's think about this, though, is <clears throat> in these questions, you're going to have to actually tell me why. Why did I do these different treatments? Why in these two didn't I add anything? Why did I just do it with milk? Why do I have a cold and a warm, one with, non one with pasteurized, the other one with the same thing, pasteurized, and then why do I have a cold with active yeast cultures? And why do I have a warm with active yeast cultures? So that's all of that. Out of all of these, and we're doing qualitative data, we're just looking, did it gel up? Did it turn into yogurt? No, 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 yes. And another thing, by the way, if you guys decide to make your own yogurt, it's very easy. Um, I just get, I buy frozen fruit, which is pretty reasonable. Smash it up a little bit and just mix it in. And then you have um, yogurt. If you like sugar, put some sugar in there. I try to avoid that. So um, I hope this lab is good for you guys. Maybe you want to try to make your own yogurt. Maybe not. But this is all about experimental design. So there's several questions at the end. Um, please answer them all. Answer them in complete sentences. Thank you guys. Uh, have a wonderful day. Everybody stay safe out there. Bye.